All right, hello everyone. I'm not sure why the ending gets a little weird there, but uh, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Paul Tran. I'm gonna dive into Photoshop Masterclass today. We're gonna do some painting, um, doing some fun, interesting things with brushes, which is gonna be interesting. Um, so we're gonna use it in different ways. So that's the idea. Oh, let's do that. All right, uh, and welcome everybody. Um, General Kenobi, is that your, it's, is that on your birth certificate? Is it really? Okay. Uh, Michelle, good to see you. Wade's in the house. Oh yeah, I got a number of things going on. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. You can see how crazy it's going to get. A uh, number of things and ideas going on. I actually have three different ones, more like four. Too many of them, by the way, uh, but I think this is going to be good. Uh, just compiling a lot of these, and that's the one I want. All right, so we'll work with this one. We have this one here. Again, just kind of dropping in a bunch of different space uh, graphics, because space is going to be one of our themes. And then we're also going to uh, have some fun just with some abstract colors and it's going to be a good time because for some reason I've been getting into color lately. There's the three designs. All right. So, uh, good day. Steve is in the house. Welcome, my friend. Uh, I've been doing, we could do traditional painting as you can see right here. Okay. So again, this is just something I was working on, just kind of like painted in Photoshop using different brushes. So we'll do kind of a riff on this. Okay, just so you can see. We have our space one that we're gonna work with, but we'll start simply with this one, which is like a whole lot of color. Yeah, it hurts a little bit, okay? And I've done this before, but I think this is so fun when it comes to like painting in Photoshop. You can jump in and just use, you know, uh, a brush, as you probably well know. Um, I put my brushes on the uh, left side. I hope that doesn't hurt your brain, <laughs> right? Uh, because this is gonna be easier for me, okay? So I could use just simple brush, selecting that hard round brush. Up at the top, we get the opacity and flow and all that good stuff, right? Now there's my hard round, okay? And we can kind of jump in, oops, and work with it. Um, and, All right, uh, and just start painting U T E, right? Just doing some lettering. Usually it doesn't work out too well. You'll be a little slop, sloppy. Let's change the brush size. So I sized it down some, but right up here we can work on the smoothness. So anytime I want a smooth line, I usually crank that up a little. Oh, wait, Michelle, you have your tools on the left as well? Oh, that's interesting. All right, and this is a lot of color, so I'm sorry it hurts, but uh, as I draw out now, as I increase the smoothing, and we could talk about opacity and flow, but I'll increase the smoothing to say almost 30%, and I'll do cute again. C, U, T, E. You usually get smoother lines overall when you use smoothing up at the top, all right? But I just want to create some fun work because this is this is a master class. I don't need to go over all these basics for you, right? In fact, I'm just going to get rid of that altogether. I'm going to create something else, right? I have all these lovely squares. And I happen to have a Wacom. So if you have a, if you're lucky enough to have a Cintiq, it took me 25 years to get this thing. But I finally have a Wacom Cintiq. 24 inch, which I highly recommend. I think 30 inch is too, almost too big in my case. And the 16 inch is just too small, right? So you at least want to be the size of your current monitor because probably half the time that's what you're using it for. Okay, so I'm going to use the hard round and pressure is going to control the size just for fun. And we can jump in and create some fun artwork. Uh, let me know if it is your first time joining me today. I would love to hear you say hello. All right, so rather than using just a brush, I'm gonna go over here and if you know me, I love this tip, right? It's using the smudge tool. So I'm gonna use this smudge tool with 
this brush pressure size, and we're gonna have some fun with these colors. You know what I'm gonna do, right? So there's the smudge tool, right? And uh, we're working on a new layer, but look at how the we have a, a change in a number of these options up at the options bar, or command bar, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, strength is gonna be important, right? We'll play with this. I don't know what it actually defaults to, but let's actually go right over here because if I right click, I can reset this tool. Did you know you could right click and reset that tool and it will give you the defaults up here. So by default, it's actually set to 50%, right? But I typically like to turn on sample all layers since I'm gonna use this background layer and we'll keep it at 50% with our hard round pressure brush. And we'll go in here and Again, just get, let's get an idea for the size. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hate it when that happens. Smudge. There we are, here's our brush. Um, okay, we're gonna go with... All right, awesome. Christy Lee is her second or third time here, loves the info, so we're gonna use your name if you don't mind. We're gonna just spell out Christy, all right? And again, I'll jump in here. Because this is set to strength at 50%, I have it set to sample all layers. Anytime I paint over this, it's gonna grab those colors, right, and smudge them. So you can see what's happening right there. If I turn off this background, <laughs> that's what we get okay but let's turn that off and let's do this again and we're going to increase the strength of the smudge i typically like to go up to 90 percent if you do 100 percent, just so you can see what's going to happen watch what happens it's going to sample and grab a lot more of those pixels and we'll kind of use those first initial pixels look at how clean that is by the way look at how clean that is Right, there it is. Uh, so again, I wanna do Christy. I would do C, H, right? I would turn off that layer. I would add a new layer because I'm running out of room. Uh, then I would do R, let's do, let's have more fun with R, R, I, S T Y. There you go. Turning that off. Here's the, oop, hello. There's the CH that we created. Let's grab both of these. Let's shrink them down a little bit. And uh, we could talk about how I made those squares as well. It's probably a couple different ways, but there we are. There we have uh, Christy. There you are, Christy. Oh, so nice. Look at that. Right, we'll adjust it. Hey, we're in Photoshop. We can uh, just do a simple um, distort, right? Kind of pull that this way so it has a little bit more of a slant. And there you have your name, right? All using that smudge uh, brush. I did not come up with this, by the way. Who taught me this many years ago? Is someone by the name of Velvet Spectrum. So if I just turn this on, bah, shaba. Spectrum, Luke Choice. He taught me this like years ago and he's much appreciated. So give credit where credit is due is amazing. And I love this tip, right? So that's the easiest way to cool, create some cool like 3D uh, text in Photoshop. We can take this a step further. But to answer your question, oh, Christy, you like it? Oh, I'm so happy. Um, to answer your question, who, yeah, those squares would make a wild depth map. You're right. And look at how smart you are. Okay, I'm gonna double click on the smart object because this is actually made in Illustrator, right? So I did a bunch of squares, right? Probably just by going like this. I don't remember how I did it, to be honest with you. I probably did a drag that over. Usually nothing else is on the screen. This is probably how I did it. right created all these squares selecting all those 
selecting all of these colors in my swatches panel. And then, and again, I did that this this morning as part of my um, design masterclass, but I want a bunch of random colors in here. I select all those random swatches, then we do random swatches fill, right? So that's all I did. The cool thing about this is obviously I could change this at any time. Can we get some photo manipulation tutorials anytime soon? You know, I feel like I do those like all the time and I love it, Sanad, I love it. I love what you're talking about, right? And that's kind of what I want to do with my next example is going to be more along the lines of having fun uh, manipulating and playing with light and fun elements with this, uh, this astronaut, right? So that's the idea. But I typically do lots of uh, photo manipulation. But so now you know how those squares were made. We could create those, we could shift those colors. Here we have this. We could add more depth to it as well. So let's just go ahead and merge these two layers. Let's create a new layer. And for this new layer, zoop, sorry, I zoomed in too much. For C-H-R-I-S-T-Y for Christy, we're gonna have highlights. And then we can also have shadows like that. And we will make these clipping masks. Hold down the option key. Bam. Bam. And now I will paint, be painting basically on top of these letters with a nice soft round just using white. You're new to art. Have you got any tips? Well, first off, have fun. Join us all the time. Do what interests you. Like, find the live streams that you think will interest you the most. Um, but hopefully this is help. Help is helpful. Um, new to art. Art is, like, very wide-ranging. So I'm not sure exactly what sort of art you're uh, looking for. But here we're kind of doing some hand lettering. We're doing some painting in Photoshop. And we're making something 3D. So I think there's a lot going on here. So I'm using the soft round pressure opacity. So here I could start painting on top, right? Adjusting my brush, but just kind of adding some highlights, right? And by the way, right up here, this is where the flow comes in very handy, right? I could just use a soft round. And this is what you should do even if you, if you don't have a Wacom. Take this flow down to like 30% or something and let's just delete everything there, and let's just do that. We're gonna use soft round with my mouse, okay? So with my mouse, I can actually start to paint over this and it will, the, um, the flow will start to build up to 100% opaque uh, as, I, as I go over this. If you change the opacity to 50%, it's never gonna get any more opaque than 50%. So I think people mess with those numbers and wonder what's going on, and that's why I thought it'd be helpful for you to know. Ooh, Ooh let me get back into this. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. What if your name is Art and you actually, Art was your major? Like, I knew somebody. Last name is Smiley. What profession is she in? Ah, oh, she's a dentist. I think that's fascinating. Right? Okay. Doesn't look like much right now because I'm gonna change the blend mode in a second. Okay, so right over here for the highlights, I don't want them to be just white. I'm gonna change this to, and let me zoom out, to say overlay or something else. Overlay or soft light. Overlay is gonna do it. That's what I'm painting. And now we'll continue painting in Photoshop. Paint, paint, paint. We're just creating some highlights like that right here. It's not that strong, I get it. But you get the idea. Creating those highlights. Like that. Like that. It works better on some colors more than others. It actually works better on the darker colors, right? On that blue and that green. Sorry about that notification. Very unprofessional of me, I'm sorry. But, so it's gonna seem very subtle, but it's gonna have a lot of pop to it, especially as I start to add the shadows. Shadows, same thing. I'm just gonna paint uh, with black.
right? It's gonna look really dark initially. But not to worry, folks. How's everybody doing? Haha, <laughs> collected model trains. When, you know, remember when that was a thing? Model trains? I feel like you needed some serious space to... To collect some things, you need some serious space. At most, I think I collect probably 80s toys. But again... I would rather... I want to be a collector of knowledge. How about that? Because there's a lot I don't know. So just painting kind of on the underside here. Right in there. Right up here. You guys get the idea. Probably the darker, the better it's going to be. Right? It's not bad. And again, we'll do the same thing. We'll change this to like overlay, right? And I could always double up on this layer. Command J. Making it darker and darker and darker. I have all these like layers that just make it much, uh, a little bit more dark. I don't even think I need that many. Let's just have one set to normal. Welcome everybody, it is Friday. Anika, how you doing? So this was easy to do. Uh, next thing I do is just like paint in some backgrounds or some, some soft background to kind of make it stand out a little bit. So let's sample. I don't want it to be pure black, but I'll sample just uh, that nice blue. And I think I will use just the soft round. All right, we'll jump in here and just see if this works. I'm thinking of this as 3D, like the text, the main body of the text is like on the canvas, right? But then these different parts kind of jump off. So it'll be dark right there. But then the idea of that, that part kind of like coming forward is what I'm trying to do. I don't know if this is working. Is it making it look a little muddy? The nice thing is I can always kind of scale that back as well. Um, but there you have Christy. And that one's done. Fry, yay. That's what I should have done. So pretty straightforward. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, yes, very cool. There we are. Christy is done. I better save this file, huh? I like to show that this is live by using somebody's name. And let's keep in mind we still have this wonderful background that the designer in me kind of wants to play with the background a little bit just to see what I would end up with. All right, I'm just kind of curious as to like what would happen. I just played with it a little bit. Like does it need a more interesting background? I guess is my question to you guys. If you guys know me, probably what I would do is I would add a gradient, right? And I would use something like this one or something lighter like that, right? So that kind of works. Hmm. Thoughts, questions, concerns, irrational fears, anyone? Is it working? Is it not working? I don't know. Again, I talked about this this morning. Probably what I would do is I would, uh, I would like play with this a little bit. I, I, f I feel like for me, the hardest thing is like, is working on the background and getting something right when it comes to the background. I think it should go to a pink, right? So I probably want to sample this hot pink right here. 
maybe take it down some. I don't know. It needs help. All right, let's continue because we have more to do. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's not working, guys. It's not working. It's okay. Let's just make it a little softer. Lighten it up. I don't know. It needs work. Steve is my manager. Um, yeah. Um, how else can I help you guys? This needs just more work. All right, let's move on. Because right now I'm thinking it would be better with yellow. But let's not worry about this. Let's move on. Ugh. Okay, fine. I'm going to change this really fast. Please bear with me. I know it's bothering me. It needs to be just a wonderful... All right. Okay, let's move on. Done. Did it. That's that's what I want. We've done that. Uh, let's have some fun with more painting that we could do. We could work on a volleyball scene. We could kind of pick this apart to see how this was made, but really kind of starting from scratch, right? We have these fun volleyball players, right? We can get in the textures, what you can do. Um, blue would be good. Oh, Froja, like a light blue, because blue tends to recede. Um, warm colors kind of come forward, so I think a light blue would work out well. All right. Fantastic. Here's a fun situation. Just so you know how I made this, by the way, it's like I, I wasn't sure about the composition. So personally, what I did to paint this image is I actually used dimension of all things. So if I turn off all these layers, you can see um, I probably don't even have the original anymore. <laughs> but I actually rendered everything out in dimension, right? So I said, hey, you know what? Give me a template, you know, um, let's bring back some things. Bring it back, bring it back. This is more along the lines of the original. All right, let's show you what I have here by turning on these other elements. And here we go. So you can see right in here, this is actually what I used, right? I said, how do I want to create this volleyball scene in dimension, right? Just because I can control all the angles and everything. So I said, you know, do I want something that's maybe a little bit more dynamic, maybe a higher range? And also what I used is I played with the camera in the field of view right over here. So this is the camera's perspective. So I can give it an extreme perspective like that or a little bit more shallow or flat, right? So again, kind of deciding on what I wanted, zooming out. I just thought something with a little bit more perspective would be a little more interesting in this case, right? Uh, who else is getting good on dimension is Joe at, uh, oh, I don't know Joe's last name, Steve. So yeah, super easy, right? I just have this one pineapple. That's easy enough. Get this set up that way I want. Let's kind of rotate it around, kind of like that. And then we just render it, right? Render that out. And then there you have your scene that you can start painting over. And we could do that right now. In fact, I rendered out something else. If we go clear to my desktop, which is somewhere out here, hiding all these things that you don't need to see, top secret, notes, but most importantly, here's the volleyball that I just rendered out. There it is. We can make this fun volleyball character. You get additional layers for selecting, which is really fun, okay? And you get depth information, which might be helpful as well. But right in here, we'll just sort of create a new layer and then start with some of our actual brushes, right? And by the way, you, you could also actually use a real pineapple image too as your reference. But this is kind of my reference image. Uh, going in here, selecting a brush. Typically, you will have a ton of brushes as I right click. Here are all my brushes. 
I have my general brushes, and then I can get into some of my dry media brushes. Uh, all right. Cool. Yeah, volleyball. That's what they were playing. Did you not? Why are there all these questions around pineapple volleyball? Pineapple is actually a term in volleyball that I would have to look up again, to be honest with you. Right down here, I have like my favorite brushes off to the side. So we have Kyle's, they're all gonna be Kyle's brushes, right? We can select it, come in here, and I love just something simple like a thick and thin. See this? Right, based on the pressure, and by the way, so again, based on my pen pressure, I get that thickness and thinness. It's just very nice and goes on very smoothly, right? We also have the classic cartoonist, which just gives it a little bit of texture as well. Um, as soon as you get like a Wacom, this, be this button becomes very important right up here. This one, boom, it says, hey, you know what? Always use pressure for size, right? Because pressure can mean different things, right? So again, we could use classic cartoonist. We have uh, oil brushes as well that we can get into, right? We could see how that works. We could turn on, again, this little button right up here, and then that pressure, you know, equates to like the size of the brush, okay? Cool, let's go into classic cartoonist because this seems like a classic cartoon piece. Uh, be mindful of the brush size. I think I did it around 10 before, but we can come in and just have this nice texture to this brush. And again, by the way, I know I'm not the expert in illustrating. That's all Kyle T. Webster, folks. I don't mean to step on his toes, but that's why my goal for this was to show you some more interesting use of brushes, like what we did with Christie's name over here. Okay, coming in here, really straightforward. Same brush, come in, shoo, shoo, shoo. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of times I will actually make sure I have these closed. So this is a, com a closed shape that I could always fill in, right? Uh, yeah, pretty pineapple. We're gonna have some fun with it, shall we? I'll have one layer, let's make a new layer. Uh, this next layer might be for all of these lovely little um, leaves on the top. Right, just kind of jutting out and looking kind of interesting. I typically, again, like to close all of these different lines and have some fun with like the in and out, sort of over and under situation. Right, zip, 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 zip. Let's do this really fast. We don't have much time. I've seen people go a thousand times faster when they're drawing. But again, just closing each one of those and doing something like that. Let's hurry up and get this party started. And finished. There we go. Yeah, that works fine, let's move on. Next layer. Uh, wait, are we going to take the painted pineapple into dimension? We're not. We're just kind of using dimension to model our scene, right? This could have just been an image, right? No big deal. Come in here. We'll do a lot with the thick and thin, right? We're going to have more pressure on one side. Oh, that's so rough. I don't even know if I want to use this brush for this area. Right, because I'll I'll try this ultimate inking thick and thin. This is why I like this ultimate inking. I have a lot of control how over how thick this line is as I press down. I want it to be thicker on the parts that's the shadow, and thinner on the other parts. So that's all I'm doing. This is just the pattern I'm making. I'm gonna hurry up. Thanks for joining me, everybody. It's good to see your names at least. Uh, yes, and by the way, APAC, they are usually, look at you with your terminology. <laughs> uh, APAC is uh, usually live streaming on Behance just uh, at, well, during their daylight hours, if you will. Okay, 
Boom, boom, boom. Let's hurry up. Let's hurry up, Paul. We don't have time. We got to get this done. But I'm doing this on a separate layer. Guess what? I'm not worried too much about the color right now, right? I don't even want to color. I don't want ha I don't want to have color kind of confuse uh, the shape of what I'm going for. And again, we're just doing this really rough. We'll give this pineapple a face. Why not? Because that would be fun. Shoop. Get out a little more depth to this if we want to. Again, this is like these cool little, what are they, hexagons? Or octagons? One, two, three. Maybe octagons. I don't know. I'm just trying to hurry, folks. Hurry. I have to impress you. Right, making sure I get more there, 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 thinner, thinner, and you guys get the idea, okay? Cool, done. You got this. Wait, thanks so much for the encouragement. Again, this is uh, something I have fun with. I don't know if this is like really my go-to, but hey, I think all this stuff is really easy to get into. Uh, using my selection tool, I could select the inside of this pineapple, and then you want to make sure you expand. You expand that selection in the center there. So we'll expand it out by maybe four pixels, right? And now on this new layer is where we can throw in a color. There you go. All right, there that is. So we have our fill, we'll have our outline, and we will have our, we'll just call this hair, because it's supposed to be a character. We'll do just texture for the character, and for this texture, we can give it a different color as well. The Octagon, I've never heard, I've actually never heard of that movie. I'm just gonna double click on this layer to change the color. picking that same color, actually cranking it down, making it a little bit more rich, something like that. There we go, right? And we can play with some depth with this now, um, but we're just getting our base colors done. So same thing for the hair, let's do this. Get this party started. This is something you could do that's pretty cool. You ready for this, Megan? Right up here at the top for the, um, uh, gosh, why am I drawing a blank? Magic wand tool. We can just put everything on a new layer. New layer, sample all layers, right? And then we can go in and just click. And I'm gonna click all the dark spots, all the, all the parts of this that uh, I want to be like a dark color. There, those are all closed. Again, we'll expand this out. You know, three pixels. And then we'll go ahead and fill it with Maybe this color, like that. Not bad. Let's move on. New layer. Again, sampling all layers so I can just have a separate. It's a snake. Yeah, it's pretty good. Separate layer. Quickly fill. Okay, there we go. Sort of the, the basis for our lovely pineapple. <laughs> oh yeah, wait, that's a great idea. You could, you could save the dimension assets together in, in, or individually and paint over them to create the scene. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Wade. Lighting could be built as reference as well. Because you are right, like as I take a look at this, if I take a look at the additional layers, I didn't even use these additional layers. This depth map right here, and I, it's actually not showing that much, so let's just kind of use levels to really bring it about. But here's the, the lighting I didn't spend much time on, but you could see that lighting for this um, pineapple. So I could still use this as part of my texture. Let's do that just for fun. Let's take this depth information. Let's use it for our fill. So here's our fill. Clip it, turn that off. There, it's now clipped. And then we can change this to a, uh, a darken or, or one of these other. You basically use that, use that information uh, in a way that might make sense. 
There's other ways to do this, right? I'm, I was actually gonna paint in these shadows, so that's why I wasn't worrying too much about it, but there's a thousand things you can do. You can do another thing, check this out. Let's go to, um, let's just do a hue and saturation. And let's see if I could do this. Option click drag, nope. Okay. Hmm. Oh well, I'll, I'll work on that later. I wanted to take this black and white information and apply it as a layer mask for this hue and saturation. But... That's gonna be a little bit more difficult to do. So I'll do it later. All right, anyways, let's paint these in now. Um, and also to your point there, Wade, uh, this, the material selection masks, I could use this to select different parts. And a lot of times these will be different colors if they're actually different 3D objects. Technically this is all one model, but this would be in a different color if those were two different uh, objects. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on, folks. We got things to do. We got a lot of painting to do, right? But this is typically how I would do things. I'd create clipping masks, take a look at our brushes over here, and use any one of these that I want. So let's just twirl this down and let's take a look at some of these brushes that we have. Let me expand this out. And like this pastel soft square, this dry media one might work out well. Let's just use black, right? And now right in here, we can just add like texture on the underside. Since this is a, um, Again, it's making it look, look, look kind of dirty, which I'm not a huge fan of. But I can get some kind of grittiness in there for this particular element. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, another thing when you're painting with brushes, Afrosia and everyone. What's up, Motive Void? Good to see you here. Keep an eye on these little icons. We made it, we worked with a smudge brush earlier, but these are smudge brushes and these are brushes. So just kind of be mindful of which one you want to use or which one you don't want to use. All right, so let's just have some fun, just like this brush says, huh? Oh yeah, here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Just make it nice and soft, hopefully. It's still a little dark. All right, let's just go back in here and work on this some more. I don't have much time. And the reason I put my panels, at least when I'm drawing, uh, I put them on my le the left hand side just because I'm left handed. So it's just, it's such a longer way to go. If I have to go clear across, my arm is entirely in my way when I have something on the right side of the screen. Let's crank that up, make it more yellow.
Okay, done, done. Let's move on, folks. Hurry, hurry, Paul, hurry. And again, if I spent more time on this, I would obviously work this out a little better, but let's just get it going. Right under here, that would be darker. Like this shadow, this leaf, right, something like that. Okay. Yeah, good enough, let's zoom out and let's add a face to this just because that would be fun okay <laughs> carol you make me laugh carol with the jokes all right let's move our character up like so let's give him a face so we'll group this this will be the body we will make one for the face and arms Things like that. Go back to our fun brushes. guy's like, hey, what's up? Let's do the eyes. How shall we do the eyes, folks? Make them little like that with a little highlight. Yeah, why not? You can always hit the X key to flip the colors. Throw a little highlight in there. Why not? X, flip the colors. Maybe another eye over here. I think I could do better than that. Flip the colors. Like so. There you go. Let's do a mouth. Again, new layer. Maybe you got a shortcut key for those new layers. There you go. Sure, why not? Something like that. Pretty simple. We have our uh, little character that we still need to work on. So googly eyes would be fun, right? I could probably experiment more with these eyes for sure. I think it's cute when they're like spaced out further. One issue is this texture kind of getting in the way a little bit. So let's just drop down that opacity. You could obviously see that face a little bit better. And we could also paint just a little opacity and flow. Why not? Actually, let's do this. Right, there's that color. Try to just add a little bit of a highlight, something like that. I don't know, maybe that's working. All right. I don't know if I'm making it look that easy. You know who makes it look easy? Kyle T. Webster. He's up today, by the way. So stay tuned for him, because it's going to be amazing, whatever he does, because pretty much everything he does is amazing, right? All right down here, let's add a little bit of a shadow, like so. Oh, get that wonderful texture. 
and then just I'll just drop down the opacity so it's not so strong like that okay there's our fun pineapple character right there's more we can do I still want to get onto my space scene by the way so here this is let's take all of this group it together where is our volleyball players there they are do your thing boys do your thing okay let's put these two side by side here's my other characters there's this one and uh, let's bring him into the scene why not here's our new character uh, we will name him Sanad. Hopefully that's okay. Sanad, you just joined us, and you know what? You just joined the volleyball game too. So we have Sanad back here, the volleyball player. Put them behind the boundaries, right? Shrink it up even more, like that. There you go. Hey, Arsenad, you just made it just in time to be part of this scene. Wait for it. Still thinking. Oh, good. Thanks for a cool use for a dimension. <sighs> yeah. I, I do think one thing that needs to be fixed is honestly this character right here. Like, Sanad we would be better off being used potentially like right here in place of, what is this, defender number two? Maybe we put Sanad right there, as you can see. And again, I'd need to change a lot with it to make it work <sighs> because he's just like not on the same plane. But I like his shape better than my other character. He looks too round. And the reason it's this way is, again, I wanted to get the angle right, and that's why I used dimension, right? You know, he should actually be a little bit more oval and less round. So that's all. Right, cool. We got our volleyball players. I don't know what else you want to add to this. Let's save this file. I have about six minutes, eight minutes, seven minutes, actually. Just a bunch of happy pineapples in the scene. Some of these facial features are actually a little bit too small. This one doesn't come in too well. I'm noticing right in here. Hold down the command key, click, and it will jump right to that layer. So there's my pineapple pattern that I painted, right? We just go ahead and adjust the opacity. Take that opacity down, even taking down the opacity of this texture so that face kind of comes through a little bit more. Right, that tends to look a little bit better, I'm noticing. And again, we can take that down as well. You get the idea. Just little tweaks I'd probably make to this design to get it to look right. All right. Background I need to work on, but let's move on to something else. Let's save this. Because I was going to do a space thing as well. Because I don't know, I don't know why I do this to myself. Why, why do, why am I so type A that I have to do like three different designs in one hour? Is that really necessary? <laughs> yeah, it's adorable. And again, using dimension just to get the placement down is the only thing. I could have just as easily sketched it out. But I really wanted to work on the angles, and I just I just knew that. For I knew the toughest thing about this was getting the angle right so you could see all the characters pretty easily, even though technically they're on one plane. Okay, so now that that's saved, we can see, again, here's the one we did for Christy. I do want to mention that uh, somebody talked about using blue Afroja. I don't know if it was you, but I think that was a great idea. Right, this is the power of community right here. Okay, so let's do space. But that's the power of community because like I was struggling with that. Somebody said like a blue and this is a lovely color. Let's get into this one because this is the one I wanted to work on too. I wanted to have this space guy 
right? And I, I kind of wanted to have some things kind of floating around his head. So do some in and out with some sparkles. So I was gonna create a sparkle brush, okay? That's what I was gonna do, create a sparkle brush. I actually haven't decided if I was gonna use this one. Let's just group that together. Or even like another astronaut altogether. I'm just like really torn on this one. So this one's gonna take a little bit longer time. Uh, but let's just make the sparkles first. This is how I would do it. I would jump in. Uh, let's do a lens flare. So let's fill everything with black. Go down here, render uh, lens flare. There it is. Maybe make that a little bit smaller. Hit OK. There it is. Let's invert it. Right? Let's shrink it down. down to 20%, something like that, super little. There's one little like um, potential sparkle thing. Okay, um, by the way, I, oh, let's see if I got him. Wait for it, Paul's brushes. Oh, lens flares and sparklers. So I already actually have some of these made. So let me show you how to make them. Select this. We'll go to edit, uh, create brush, define brush preset. There we go. Sparkly. There we are. Created this one down here. Now let's go back out. Let's just add some black. Select our brush, change that to white, and this is what we get typically. Bam, 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 right? Okay, it is okay. There's plenty of ways to manipulate this, but let's take this, let's go to our brush settings. Bam! For this brush, we want to space it out for sure. We want to change the shape dynamics. We want to adjust, we want to adjust the size, the size jitter. Um, the angle as well, so angle jitter and uh, the scattering. Jump in here with the scattering, let's scatter it as well, okay? So that's the scattering. We're gonna work on color dynamics. So for the color dynamics right here, uh, we want to um, balance between the foreground and the background. So we'll come in here, we'll select a pink, and then we'll do just like another bright color, like a yellow. Okay, and then we're just gonna see what happens, folks. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay. Let's go back in here. Oh, hue jitter. Wait. Control. Uh, apply per tip. There we go. That's what I wanted. Just needed to turn on apply per tip. Um, the thing is you don't want to, you want the purity to be up 100%, by the way. Um, but you don't want to adjust that you don't want that uh, purity going down. So basically you don't want a saturation jitter in this case. case. But there you go. So we have our sparkles now. Uh, that's how these other sparkles were created. I would probably take this and save this new brush. Sparkly done right. Boom. There it is. Oh, guess what? We have all my other sparkly brushes and other ones in here too that I could take a look at using my Wacom. Are any of these even any good? No, they're not. I think right down here, those are, those get more interesting, right? This is pretty much just a stamp. Okay, so I've already shown you how to make better brushes than I've made in here, by the way. Okay. I only have one minute. doesn't quite give me enough time. Let's cro close those brush settings. Turn on this layer and that's when I would start painting with the new brush that we made, which should appear clear down at the bottom, right? Cranking up the saturation. And then I'd add more glow to it. That's all folks. Sorry I didn't get through this enough. If you wanted to add more glow to something, think about using a layer style, because you could always add an outer glow, right? You can see that's actually way intense but we want to adjust the, the size and change that. So 
Um, yeah, so see how I've just beefed that up even more? That's starting to look pretty good. You guys get the idea. Jason's up next. It's going to be fantastic. He's going to create some, make some cool stuff as it shows for his, uh, the title of his stream is going to be amazing. And uh, yeah, it's a fun day of uh, master classes. He's going to do some how, how dynamic links with and works with After Effects. Linking apps is awesome. So there you go, guys. Three designs all made for you. Have a beautiful day, everybody. And uh, we will see you soon online. Thanks so much, everybody. See y'all.